Chase Liak with the blue futon out of the box or out of the wall, whatever you want to call it. Do you know what it is? Scream 3. Does it hold up or is it as good as the first and second one? Because this one does have a different rider. Let's bring out the knives. Can I do it this time now? All right. One, two, three. Stacking up nicely. Three. Oh, it wasn't as good. Let's try it again. Three. That's the best you're going to get. God, I'm such a weirdo. Anyway, Scream 3. What's it about? A very simple premise, actually. So this one takes place later in the future. Nev Campbell's character. Back. David Arquette's. Back. Lee Schreiber. Back. Courtney Cox. Back. New characters are also involved. Patrick Dempsey before Grey's Anatomy. And other characters are back for this movie. What is this one now about? Well, now they're on Stab 3, a.k.a. Scream 3. And people are dying on the movie sets because we are bringing the past back with Nev Campbell's mother. Who actually killed her? What made her go crazy? What is her past actually like? So this one, again, if you've seen the first two, you know it's going to get meta and break the fourth wall. This one surprised and brings back Jamie Kennedy as well. And I think that was a good shock of what his conclusion of what a trilogy will do. Past comes back to haunt you. Everything from the past is going to haunt you because you have no idea who people are in your life at this moment. Does Screen 3 hold up? I still think this one does hold up with what it is trying to do with closing out this trilogy of the Scream movies. Because bringing back the past, yeah, I understand what they're doing there. But with that past, they do some weird scenes that feels... Wes Craven 80s type of movies about these weird flashbacks and women in white dresses that are like, oh, see me, know me from your past. Like, ooh, like ghost premonitions. And that is really cheesy. And I think they're trying to be cheesy in this movie. But honestly, I don't think that works so well in the Scream franchise and doing those kind of flashback scenes like that. I understand what they're trying to do with the cheesiness as well. But in the Scream universe, I don't think it really fits with what they're trying to do. Because what they do, they already are breaking the fourth wall. They're already trying to do the tropes. And if you're already on the third one and you don't know that's what they're doing, that's the viewer's fault of knowing, you know, what you're getting yourself into with a movie kind of like Scream 3. But this one is more taking place in Hollywood. What's happening on the movie set of Stab 3 because people are dying on this movie set. And now, you know, we got to figure out who's doing it the past of these characters and who is going to die with this one actually though just rewatching it the killings are not as sharp or as not as graphic as the first two when i think about it. the first one you have blood and guts like drew barrymore and other characters you know the garage door scene the second one you do have a little bit more like throat slashing blood dripping but this one is more tamed actually there are some fun cameos of jane silent bob i did enjoy that extremely well and that was during the whole James Allen Bob Strikes Back dimension, you know, Miramax type of age. So they had huge, you know, clout in Hollywood, if you want to put it that way. But this one actually felt, it just felt more tame. And I understand why people probably didn't like the third one as much because, you know, stabbed in the back scene, stabbed in the back scene, some blood here and there, people thrown off the roof, blood here and there. Uh, twist and turn, you kind of know what's happening with the twists and turns if you actually pay attention to the story. When I first rewatched it, I was like, oh, okay, interesting twist. I do not remember that. But then when you think about it, you're like, yeah, I should have saw that coming. I'm an idiot. Duh. It really makes sense with what Jamie Kennedy's, Jamie Kennedy's character is trying to say in the whole pay attention to the past, hint, hint, what happened in the past, hint, hint, Weinstein, hint, hint. And it makes you wonder, is this a Weinstein type of movie? Did Weinstein produce this? Oh, the Weinsteins did produce this movie. Huh. Very fascinating. With Rose in the first one, the Weinsteins with this one. Holy cow, this is a web. And it makes you wonder, the writer, the new writer, did he know about the Weinsteins and the whole backstory of Hollywood in the 70s and 80s and what some people did for females in this position to try to get movies and doing some stuff with the Weinsteins did? So... 
maybe this is breaking like the seventh wall with this movie of wine scenes, what we know now and today, what they're talking about in the 70s and 80s with females in Hollywood and stuff like that. So yeah, a lot of walls are being broken down in this movie. Very, very interesting when you look at the big picture, you know, 20 years later of, huh, huh. But anyway, Scream 3 doesn't hold up. I think it does. It is the weakest of the three, hands down. The writing isn't as sharp. The killings aren't as great as I remember. You know what's happening already. Fourth walls are being broken again. It is still fun, cheeky dialogue as a whole. But it is, is a downshift in writing. And just weird character, you know, flashbacks that I just think don't go well. And the ending with the door opening up. Ah! close the door you know electricity is pretty expensive maybe not in 2000s but it's california everything's expensive in california bro raw scream three it works however it is the weakest of the trilogy bar none so scream three will receive a two and a half out of five of futons it goes at 50 percent let's see what the critics news scores gave this one so you have critics a 41 percent with 127 of them a lot more than the other ones audience score at 37 percent with a 250,000 plus Here's quick consensus. Despite some surprising twists, Scream 3 sees the franchise falling back to the same old horror formulas and cliches it once hacked and slashed with post-modern abandon. Like I said, I really think it has to do with the new writer of this movie that didn't know what it wanted to do. And I don't know if Wes Craven really wanted to make a third one, but of course probably studio heads are like, look, look, we got that, we got that, we got that cash, we need that cash. And the wine scenes apparently were very atrocious of being douches with their sex lives with females and in the editing room with like snow pierced or stuff like that. Anyway, Scream 3, I'm rambling now. 50, 41, 37, Chase Black with the Blue Futon. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think about this Blue Futon Utopia, you Blue Futonians. Thanks for watching and have a great day. But like I said, Scream 3, it is still a very watchable movie. If you've seen Scream 1 and 2, you're going to watch Scream 3. Just prepared for, you know, a little ho-hum. It's a ho-hum for the three knives. Are we going to make it? Ooh, sunset. It's more like a middle finger. God, I'm not cool at all.